Let's look at editing a venue configuration in the Ruckus One Network Management Platform. Please note that this is a how-to video and not a why-to video, meaning it's not intended to provide deep dive information on every setting. Visit the RuckusNetworks.com website to find training curricula as well as access to Ruckus Technical Family content, which also includes best practices and deployment guides. Whether you took advantage of the Ruckus One default configuration settings during venue creation, or you need to modify settings to improve the user experience, Ruckus One makes it easy to reconfigure your venue settings. The venue screen is accessible from the dashboard and also by clicking the venues option on the main menu. Note that clicking the tick box for a venue is the only way to delete a venue. But don't worry, the delete action requires a confirmation, so it cannot be performed by a single errant click. To modify a venue's configuration, you may click the edit function or click directly on the specific venue name which takes you to the Venues Overview tab where you'll find the Configuration button. Either way provides direct access to all the venue configuration settings. The Venue Details tab reflects the current venue name and address and the optional description if entered, all of which are modifiable. Notice that the country code is grayed out or inactive. So although you can modify the address, you cannot change the address to a different country. The Wi-Fi configuration tab consists of several tabs worth of settings that apply to all access points in this venue, unless you've applied device-specific custom settings that override these venue settings. On the radio tab, you can modify the Wi-Fi radio settings, enable an external antenna for outdoor AP models that are supported by Ruckus One, as well as modify the load balancing settings. Radio-related settings apply specifically to the access points added to the venue. The Wi-Fi radio settings seen here can also be configured on a per-access point basis by modifying the specific AP's configuration. So at either the venue level or the AP level, you can manage the channel selection method, bandwidth, transmit power, and channel selection for each radio band. The Modifying an Access Point Configuration video goes into detail about these settings, so we won't repeat that here. Of note here, though, is the Background Scan Timer setting, which is configurable only at the venue level. Background Scan is the process of having an access point temporarily go off channel to gather information on the surrounding WLAN environment and then return to its original channel. The data recorded during the scan is used for both the channel fly and background scanning channel selection methods, as well as rogue AP detection and AP location detection. By default, background scan is set to run every 20 seconds on the 2 and 5 GHz radios and every 10 seconds on the 6 GHz radio as this provides a good balance between AP performance, user experience, and network security. You can modify the interval to run more frequently, down to every second, which would negatively impact overall AP performance and user experience, or less frequently, up to 65,535 seconds. Less frequent scanning provides a minor improvement in overall AP performance, but it also allows rogue APs to go undetected for that longer interval. With a simple click of your mouse, Ruckus One makes it easy to reset the radio settings on each Wi-Fi band tab to the default settings. Scrolling down the screen or clicking the external antenna radio button brings you to settings for external antennas for outdoor Ruckus access points. Once an AP model is selected and the external antenna is enabled, you can adjust antenna gain for each radio. Scrolling a bit further, or clicking the Load Balancing Radio button on the left side, 
brings you to the load balancing settings. Ruckus One automatically sets these default settings when you initially create the venue. Load balancing balances client load across adjacent access points so that one AP doesn't get overloaded while another sits idle. Load balancing is enabled by default and requires the use of background scanning channel selection method. Load balancing can be based on client count, which is the default setting, or it can be based on capacity using data collected during the background scans. Band balancing balances the client load on radios by distributing clients between all the radios. This feature is enabled by default and set to a target of 25% of clients connecting to the 2.4 GHz band. You can also adjust this client load percentage. Once the percentage threshold is met, the AP encourages clients to connect using another band, such as 5 GHz. Steering mode controls the AP's steering behavior for load balancing and band balancing. Three modes are supported, basic, which is the default, proactive, and strict, and all of these are explained right here in the UI. Still in the Wi-Fi configuration tab, we next see the networking tab, where you can configure LAN ports, cellular options, mesh networking, and directed multicast settings for your APs in the venue. LAN ports settings are model specific, and Ruckus One ensures that PoE trunk ports cannot be accidentally disabled or modified. However, other ports can be enabled or disabled, and you can define the port type, the VLAN untag ID, and VLAN members. The Modifying and Access Point Configuration video goes into detail about these settings, so we won't repeat that here. Cellular options enable administrators to specify which bands to lock an LTE connection to on a per SIM basis. Now, this only applies to APs that support cellular backhaul over LTE networks, such as the Ruckus M510 series. Cellular options include SIM slot settings. Note that both SIMs are defaulted to ON, but only one slot must be enabled. The APN field is set by default to Default APN, which allows the AP to internally search for an appropriate APN name and set it in the RPM key through the LTE chipset. Otherwise, you can enter the SIM's APN name if you know it. The 3G, 4G LTE selection field dictates internet speed. It's defaulted to auto, but you can select 4G only or 3G only. Data roaming is enabled by default. This allows clients to roam between access points or networks without having to reassociate, reauthenticate, and obtain a new IP address. LTE bands are not preselected by default, allowing use of any available band. Once the administrator selects specific bands, then only those selected bands will be used to establish LTE connections. The WAN connection setting controls how the AP is connected to the network from its primary SIM card, either through the Ethernet or cellular data. The primary WAN recovery timer defaults to 60 seconds, but can be set from 10 through 300 seconds. And mesh networking can be enabled. Mesh networking adds resilience to your venue network by ensuring that wired APs in your venue maintain a connection to the network if they lose their wired connection and allows APs to be added to a network even if it's physically prohibitive to cable them to the network. Note that APs must first be managed by Ruckus One and in the operational state before they can be added to the network in a mesh-enabled venue. Only after that can the AP be unplugged from the PoE and plugged into only a power source. Note that if you already have mesh-enabled APs assigned to this venue, then you'll not be able to disable this option. Directed multicast can be disabled or enabled separately for wired client, wireless client, and network traffic. The Modifying and Access Point Configuration video goes into detail about these settings, so we won't repeat that here. Next, we'll look at the Security tab. Notice that you're given the option to discard or save your networking tab changes. 
let's discard those changes and move on. The Security tab facilitates enabling and disabling of security features, such as denial of service protection and rogue AP detection. The Network Control tab allows you to manage various services and policies at the venue level. Enable or disable a syslog server and select or define the server for this venue. Likewise, you can enable or disable use of the MDNS fencing service. When enabled, you're prompted to add an MDNS service and the wizard steps you through the process. And you can enable or disable use of AP SNMP. When enabled, you're prompted to select from SNMP agent profiles that you've already defined, or you can add a new one. Advanced Settings allows you to enable or disable the LEDs on APs that you already have defined for your venue or models that you plan to add. Note that by default, status LEDs for all AP models are enabled. But to control a specific model, simply add the model, toggle the switch off to disable LEDs, or toggle back on to illuminate the LEDs. This is handy when you want to disable the lights on APs in certain areas of a venue, perhaps to not draw attention to the AP, or to help maintain a low light environment, or enable lights on a certain model for troubleshooting purposes. The Switch Configuration tab consists of several tabs worth of settings that apply to all switches in your network, unless you've applied device-specific custom settings that override these venue settings. The General tab allows you to select or add a configuration profile, add a DNS IP address, as well as enable and define a syslog server. The AAA tab allows you to add and define RADIUS and TACAC servers in order to enable authorization or accounting. Here you can also add local users, defining their username, password, and read, write, or port config privilege. Further down the screen, you'll see a settings area where you can enable or disable types of login authentication, authorization, and accounting. The Configuration History tab reflects the time, type of operation, and result of switch configuration modifications. The search field allows you to filter on a specific type. The Routed Interfaces tab lets you view and add VLAN interfaces, otherwise known as Virtual Ethernet Ports, or simply VEs. VEs are logical routing interfaces used to route Layer 3 protocol traffic between VLANs. The routing parameters allow for routing outside of the local switch. That brings us to the end of this video on modifying a venue configuration in the Ruckus One Network Management Platform.